What if I told you that cheetah recalls were the most misunderstood and wrongly used concept by at least 90% of the players I've coached? Everyone seems to have at least heard of the term, but people also seem to not know exactly when or why you should use them as opposed to doing something else. So I made this PowerPoint, um, which took far too much time um, to help convey the concepts. It will be available on my Discord, so if you want to feel free and join to download it, go for it. Um, just a minor disclaimer though, I, I obviously can't include everything in this PowerPoint or video. I'm sure you all have different ideas of your own that you could add, um, but that's fine. This video could be hours long, this topic is huge, and there's so much more I could talk about, but I've tried to include the most important things. So, firstly, let's talk about um, some background knowledge that you need to know. Why does wave management of the early game matter? Early game waves matter. Um, basically because it's the earliest point in which we can influence our team and spread a lead from our island. Right? In general, early leads mean more in solo queue and can snowball into more leads. Right. Um, League also, in general, is a really hectic game, right? So, in general, the game is not flowchartable. Um, but this is an extremely flowchartable part of the game because of the limited variables, um, which is why it's important to get the decision making down constantly, right? So, why crash specific waves? Um, when you crash specific waves, you don't have to be in lane anymore, right? Obviously, as you don't have anything to farm. Therefore, you can leave lane and you can time this with ally plays. So, while the enemy top laner can't follow because he has to farm under tower, your um, if your team wants to make your teammate wants to make a play, you can leave the lane and pressure with him. So that's why it's important to time it well. Early waves revolve around mini objectives like the scuttle crab. So, lastly, the most important thing that you take away, or hopefully you take away here, is that we're going to be talking about scuttle crab a lot and the fact that it spawns at three fifteen. So, wave two. Um, I'll explain the options of what to crash now. Basically, what the pros and cons are of e to each are, so that you can apply the decision making to your future games. Right? I'm not going to tell you. I'm give you a million. I'm gonna not going to give you a million scenarios and tell you what one to crash. I'm just going to give you the pros and cons of crashing each, because you all main different champions. Every game is different, so you can apply it to your games. So let's talk about the second wave, um, and why you would crash it. Basically, the most common champions that crash the second wave are Fury users like Trindamir. Um, this is because generally they can take good trades that outweigh the cons of crushing the second wave. Um, sorry, the, that outweigh the cons of crushing the second wave, right? Um, so, you know, Trinomir uh, gets a bunch of fury, spins onto the enemy, crits for a million damage, right? Um, this doesn't mean you should do this every game on Trinomir. So some games uh, where you can't get these trades potentially, then you should consider not crushing second wave, right? So if you crash second wave, haven't got the trades off, ask yourself, was this the best option? Compared to future options I'll talk about in this video. Um, so another uh, reason to crash second wave is in matchups where you have shove but are in a bad early matchup. So this is quite specific. Um, for example, some matchups uh, at the absolute highest level, such as Jax versus Camille, um, are won by hard crushing the first two waves to avoid bullying of Camille early and getting out of the early as after this you only have to wait for the bounce back and you can just chill. Like you've avoided the first three, so three or four levels because um, you haven't had to interact, you've just shoved waves, right? So the cons of um, the cons to the second wave crash are that you have the least options on the crash, as it's a small wave crash, right? Um, the bigger the wave, the more tempo you have. The crash also doesn't sync up with any ally plays. So the big con is also that the bounce back um, means in another big con is, is that the bounce bounce back means that in some matchups you can actually lose priority for the scuttle crab at 315. I'm not going to get into how I made it. How, sorry, how um, you can do this, but I made a video on it. It should appear on your screen now. So uh, if you want to watch it, then go for it. Click it. And then here, okay. The big one, the third wave crash. Right. If you take one thing away from this video, um, I really want to emphasize. It's that you learn and understand when to crash third wave and what to do afterwards. Okay, this is the most important thing. The single most important thing you know how to do um, is that you crash third wave into walking down into river and securing scuttle crab for your jungler. This is this is you spreading your lead in lane um, and can snowball into even bigger leads for your jungler, right? So. I'm not going to explain any further than that for what your jungler can do, I just want to explain the top lane side of things. If your jungler does not need assistance, 
or they're going to bot crab, then you can cheat a recall after that. But scuttle crab always takes priority over che cheater recalling. So other reasons include the fact that when you crash third wave, you can leave lane on this timer, and it's also when an enemy jungler has full cleared as the same timer. So you can just leave, and you've essentially dodged a big gank window, right? You can also potentially look for a TP um, if it's impactful enough, or a deep board. So there are almost no cons to this um, third wave crash, other than you can be cheese level 2 ganked, or die to a ganking jungler, right? Like a Elias Rek'Sai and all this thing. But in which case you shouldn't really be pushing anyway. Lastly, this is a big mistake I see people make. If your jungler is pathing to top crab and might need help, secure it for them and do not cheater. The biggest mistake I see people make is people cheatering on a third wave crash because they're like, oh, I want my cull or extra D blade, um, instead of helping their jungler who clearly wants to go for top lane scuttle crab. And the enemy jungler also wants to go top lane scuttle crab. And they're just coin flipping which jungler comes out on top when they could be there and secure it for them. I can't tell you how many games I've seen lost from this. Anyway, let's take a look at an example. Um, okay, let me open it up. One second. Uh, so this is Urgot versus Yon. This is a coaching vault I had. And this is going to be an example of a third wave crash and how to execute it. Oh, whoops, that's not what I want on the screen. There we go. So, Urgot versus Yon. Urgot for sure can crash the uh, third wave into Yon, right? Because Urgot just stomps Yon. So, we're going to show how to do it. Basically, TLDR, you look to get control of the wave by whatever means necessary. So, in this case, Urgot can take good trades into Yon. An example of this is a cheese trade. And let's speed it up. He flips him. There you go. And now there's absolutely no way in hell Yon can contest the wave. He already kind of could before. Oh, sorry, uh, kind of couldn't before because it's Yon. But, and Urgot's an insane early game champion. But now for sure it's guaranteed, right? So what he's going to do, the Urgot, is he's going to look for kills if possible. If not, in, his ba in, in the back of his head, he's looking for a play, which is the third wave crash into helping Skelter Crab because he sees his jungler pathing to top crab. So, I'm going to speed it up one more time. And he's slow pushing. This is the second wave now. So what I see a lot is people accidentally pushing the second wave too fast and getting in an awkward position where they can't crash under the turret. So if that happens to you, you've got to go back and find out why that happened. And maybe you push too fast, maybe something like this. And then you've got to be really hard on yourself and fix that. So ignore this ward, it's really bad. He doesn't need it. And then the third wave comes. So what he should do here is insta-crash the wave. And I want you to ask yourself why he does something in a second, right? Just pause the video, ask yourself why he does this. And if you can't think of the answer, I'll answer in a second. Um, so if we if you see this, why does he do this? It can be slightly better, but why does he just use his E on the wave here? Just pause it. Okay, I assume you thought about it, and the answer is because there is no way in hell he can get a kill on Yon. So, I'm sure a lot of you watch LS, right? Um, he makes a good point, and it's a fundamental. How rely like how useful is the trade here compared to effectively getting the wave in, okay? Um, he'll grill pro players for trading when they should just be crashing the wave because there's no hope of actually killing the enemy, right? The trade won't amount to anything. There's the reason it won't amount into anything. is because Yon is so close to his tower that he can just walk back, you know? It, it, Urgot should never get, he should never get in range for a flip and Yon could just walk back. So the more reliable play is to just get the wave crashed in as soon as possible and then run into river to secure the crab. And that's why you should use your spells on the wave if you can afford to use them in the matchup and still secure the wave. So he crashes. Doesn't really matter if he gets the farm. Unless you're planning to cheat or you need to hit a certain threshold of gold. And then he passed upwards for some reason, but he runs down into river. Now Yon is stuck farming top lane because he received a big slow push crash on the third wave. Right? And now what, you should, what, what he should do perfectly here is just chill in this pixel bush. He's dropped a ward here, which is good. It spots out the joy if the jungler comes to top side. He should wait in the pixel bush and just play point guard for this scuttle crab so that his Olaf can secure it. Now he's waiting in river, guarding the scuttle crab. And he defends it and he wins the game. Imagine if he went to cheetah recall. 
He'd be in base, walking here, and there is no world he would ever have been able to secure this Scotty Crab or kill. Granted, Hecarim did int, but the the um, the flip side is, if Hecarim didn't get, uh, Hecarim wouldn't get this crab, right? So he wouldn't die, but the Hecarim wouldn't get this crab, and Olaf would still be able to get it. So Olaf would still have a lead. You'd still be spreading your lead. But I'm sure you've all seen junglers cry for not getting crab, and this is why. Okay, that's the example for that. Let's go back to this. I came up my script again. Okay, let's look. And then uh, here's the here's the video. So if you want to check out the example again, then feel free. Um, wave four, wave four. This is a uh, lesser understood, and a bit less important. But I thought I'd include it in the video. So the question is, what does a fourth wave crash sync up with, right? So the big one is that champions um, who full clear, and their clear time. So usually you can fourth wave crash as the ally jungler. Um, ally full clear jungler wants to pressure, right? So you can actually time a fourth wave crash with a dive um, after a champion has full cleared. So this is obviously quite hard to set up in solo queue, um, but for any competitive players out there or really high elo players out there, you can set this up with your jungler pregame. So it also lets you cheater with 650 gold. That's the total amount if you see us properly. Um, so there's potential for a sheen maybe with a futures market. If you push slowly enough for the fourth wave crash, this sounds good for gangplank, for example, right? Um, also, you get the most tempo uh, as it's the biggest wave crash, and you can roam for the longest, right? So you also get a good TP window. Um, the cons are that if you want to crash the fourth wave, you generally have to trade a lot less because you want to push slower. Um, of course, right? Um, the more AOE you have the more you'll push. So you've got to factor in how much push you have whilst you trade, and then decide how many trades you want to actually make. So if I'm playing Renekton, for example, my Q onto the enemy will actually hit my minions, and it'll push faster, and then maybe I'll, I'll be forced to crash third wave, and I won't be able to crash the fourth wave, right? So you've got to keep this in mind. Um, and you'll also, uh, the last con is you'll also be gankable for longer, because you'll be stuck in lane, um, trying to crash the fourth wave, which comes up three minutes, right? So it's a lot longer. Anyway, let's look at another example of um, a fourth wave crash versus uh, in my competitive game. And I understand the reason I'm showing examples because it's quite hard to digest. So I'm using an example, right? So let's look at this game. Um, it's I recorded this with my streaming software and I forgot to take my map overlay. It's Twitch chat anyway, so you don't miss anything. Um, so I'm the Renekton. Um, this is my competitive game. And I, in the champ select, we have the full clearing jungler, and I said we can dive on the fourth wave crash. Right, so I can't trade very much. I know that much because I want to slow push. This is the third wave, so I've, I've, cut, I've cut to the third wave, right? Because I've been slow pushing. Notice that Mundo's full HP. Normally, any Renekton would have hard traded, right? The problem is this never really amounts to anything, usually. But Renekton's strength is, and a lot of other champion strengths, so like Volibear, Set, they can 100 to 0 the enemy top laner with the jungler, right? So... I can 100 to 0 this Mundo with my Diana. So what I'm setting up for is a fourth wave crash. And that's our plan. So I don't really need to trade earlier. The only trade I need to do, right? So I decide beforehand, I know I need to um, knock off bone plating for the dive. And I need to knock off his passive for the dive so I can stun him, right? And that's the only trades I'll do. In theory. I, I mess it up a little bit. But like, that's the idea. So I'm crashing fourth wave. This is third wave right now. Okay. And then I, I push relative to where the next wave is on the screen. Right? I could just track my, my minions. Ignore this trade. It was the worst thing I've ever done in my life. But you could just say I'm baiting for my uh, Diana to come or something like this. It's fine. And then the fourth wave is going. And now I just wait. I tell my Diana to skip um, to skip Gromp. Because she's being a bit slow for some reason. And then this is the fourth wave crash. And now in theory, he just comes. And because the wave's still here, we can kill. Even if... So this wasn't executed properly, right? I could crash this, and we could just dive him under turret, and I could slice and dice out, right? That's the whole point I wanted to convey. But do you see how the timer is synced up with Diana being available on the map? And now we push him off a big wave, right? Even mis-executed, we've gained a lead. And now this will lead into him having to TP back to lane. I'll have TP advantage. I can TP bot, secure a Drake or something, you know? So, um... Last window, last window. 
So, what wave do we crash, right? So this is the hard part. I've given you all the options, all the different pros and cons to crashing each one, but it's hard to decide what wave, what wave we crash. So, I'm gonna give you a simple process, um, and I call it the loading screen plan, right? Firstly, let's take a look at our options, right? We can pretty much only slow push and cr choose a wave to crash on, or let it push into us. So then we have to decide which wave will crash, or if we'll let it push into us and hold a freeze and contest the enemy wave crash, right? Um, so what factors do we look at when we decide what we're going to do? The first thing is the 1v1 matchup, okay? Can we secure push? That's the pretty obvious one. Um, you have to decide and know your, your matchup 1v1 top lane. Can I push into this, right? And just know how strong you are level 1, all in and stuff, and how to get the trades to get the push. Can you trade in a way that a scuba wave control is the, pretty much the, the whole thing I'm getting at. And then the enemy jungler type is also important, right? So what I mean is if they're going to be gank heavy or farm heavy, keep it simple. Um, obvious, An obvious example would be like, if you're going to lease, you know, it might be likely that you get ganked, right? Whilst you're in the middle of a third wave crash. Um, or if you're against an Udir, it's going to full clear and not really gank you that early, right? So if one's clearly... There's a chance that you, a decent chance that you get ganked on, like whilst trying to perform a third wave crash, like 240 gank by Elise or 230 gank or whatever. Then you're not going to try and do the th uh, the third wave crash, you know. So you recommend just letting it push into you, as opposed to if it's a full clear champion, then you can try and go for the third wave crash because there's gank windows later. So the last factor is what crab they're pathing to. So you have to do this one in game, but you can already like plan ahead. Um, you can decide in loading screen what option you'll go for if your jungler or the enemy jungler is going for either crab, right? So if your jungler is coming, going to bot crab, then you might um, cheat to recall, right? On the third wave crash, if you're not gankable, like for example. So you take all these into account and you make a plan. So, if we can't push, try to imagine what the enemy top wants to do if they understand what wave they want to crash. For example, if they want to crash third wave, to rotate to crab and push back, you contest the crash, so they can't. Obviously some matchups don't allow for this, right? But for example, every time they try to push and alter the wave, you push back and then you deny the third wave crash and keep it frozen so that if they leave, they're forced to miss farm. You know, that's how you counterplay it. And then the FAQ. I don't really want to read this out, um, you can go read this, or you can pause it and read it if you want to, because this video is already getting pretty long, and my throat is going, so, um, I'll just close the video in now, I just wanted to hope, I hoped that the video was, uh, helpful, I just wanted to say that, so, I have more videos, which should appear on your screen now, um, which involve various macro and micro guides, um, this took a disgusting amount of time to make, so I appreciate a like and a sub and all that, so, I'll be streaming, um, I'll likely be streaming on release of this video, so if you're interested in watching me play um, and explain my thought process, etc., then feel free. So, thanks for watching, guys, and see you later.